Hi everyone! Have you ever wondered how to disappear objects that obstruct the view between the camera and our main character? In this chapter, we are going to recreate the Trifox style dissolve effect using shader graph in Universal Render Pipeline. Stay until the end to find out how to generate this handy effect for open worlds in 3D. In my project, I've created a new folder called Dissolving. Inside it, we can find all the files that we are going to use in this tutorial. If you want to download this project, you can do it directly from our Patreon. With a single contribution, you are going to be able to obtain all the files that we have created up to this point in our YouTube channel. In addition, you will be supporting us to continue creating free content for the community. Well, the first thing we are going to do is create a shader type lead shader graph. We will call it dissolving and then we create a new material which we will call the same way. I previously created this scene where we can see our pirate Revy Bane around some pillars which are 10 meters high. It is important to take this value into consideration since later we are going to have to calculate the distance between the camera and the vertex position of the pillars, and then divide the operation by this number. So what we do now is add the dissolving shader to the material, and then assign the material to each pillar in our scene. We open our shader. To create the effect, we need two main things. To project a noise texture on the different faces of the pillars, and then multiply the result by a mask where we will have to calculate the distance between the camera and the vertex position. We start by creating the projection of the noise on the different faces. To do this, we are going to reproduce the triplanar technique using the simple noise node. So, we bring three simple noise, one for each projection, and a position node. We need this node to pass the position of the vertices in world space into the simple noise UV coordinates. We bring a split node to separate the coordinates in the position node, and then we bring three dimensional vector type nodes. These nodes are going to have the coordinates that we will pass as a projection to each simple noise. For the first projection, we pass the CY coordinates. For the second one, we pass the XC coordinates. And for the third, we pass XY. Now we simple pass these values to the UV coordinates of each simple noise. First scale, we go to the blackboard and create our first property. It's going to be a floating type and we will call it scale. We configure it as a slider between 10 and 15 with 10 by default. We drag it to the connection area and connect it to the scale of each simple noise. Up to this point, we have the projection of the noise and the control of its scale. However, the projection is not complete yet since we are projecting only the positive axis but not the negative ones. To project on the negative, we have to do the following. We bring a normal vector and connect it with an absolute node. In this way, the positive axis will be reflected in the negative axis. Before continuing, I want to tell you that we are currently developing the Unity Shader Bible. It will be a block book that will contain more than 300 pages of information, starting with the introduction to the shader programming language and ending with advanced concepts such as ray tracing and sphere tracing. The Unity Shader Bible will be released soon with its first chapter in beta, which contains more than 83 pages of information. If you want to participate in the publication of the book, follow the link in the description.
We continue with our effect. Now we bring a split node to separate their coordinates. What we do next is to bring three multiply nodes and multiply each simple node by the different coordinates of the previous operation. We start with ZX and connect with the X coordinate. Then we connect XZ with the Y coordinate. And finally, we connect XY with the Z coordinate. Now we simple add the factors. Done. We already have the triple R projection of the noise on the pillars. To understand what we are doing, we connect the result with the base color. Let's save and return to our scene. If we move or rotate our pillars, we will notice that we have generated a triplanar projection for each axis in the space. What we do now is go to the graph inspector and activate the alpha clip property. We are going to use the previous operation later for the alpha and for the color we are going to pass a texture. Now we are going to create the mask for the noise. We start by bringing a polar coordinates node, a split node, and a channel mixer. We separate the channels of the polar coordinates and we pass the U coordinate to the channel mixer to use it as a mask. We must project this mask on the entire screen. For that reason, we bring the screen position node and pass it as UV in the polar coordinates. For the radial scale, we need to go to the blackboard and create a new property. Let's call it radial scale and it's going to be a slider between 0 and 3 with 2 by default. We drag it into the node area and connect it as a radial scale. What we must do now is to calculate the distance between the camera and the object's vertex position. For this, we bring a position node, a camera node, and a distance node. We pass the vertex position and the position of the camera as input to calculate the distance between these two nodes. We bring a divide node and connect it. We are going to divide by 10 because the pillars are 10 meters high. We bring a power node and connect it to the previous operation using a power of 2. And finally, we multiply this operation with the mask. Done! Our mask is complete. Now we simply have to multiply this operation by the noise we created previously. Up to this point, we have the dissolving effect of the pillars ready. To understand what we are developing, we are going to do the following. We must go to our blackboard and create a new property. Let's call it Dissolve Percentage. And it's going to be a slider between 0 and 1 with 0 0.5 by default. We drag our property to the connection area and then we bring two nodes, a clamp and a step. We pass the previous operation directly to the clamp as input and leave the minimum at 0 but we make the maximum equal to 0 0.99 so the effect can work perfectly. Then we pass the dissolved percentage as edge in the step and connect the output of the clamp as input. Now we simply connect this operation with the alpha in the fragment shader stage
and we make sure that the alpha clip threshold is equal to 0.1. Let's save and return to our scene. If we press play and move our character, we are going to notice that the effect is working perfectly. To adjust the effect to our project needs, we simply have to modify the property values in the material. We return to our shader. To finish the effect, we will add a texture and also make both faces of the object visible. To do this, we have to go to the Graph Inspector and activate the Two Size property. Now we go to the blackboard and create a property of type Texture 2D, which we will call Main Text. We draw the property to the node area and connect it with a sampler Texture 2D node. To differentiate the internal and external color of the pillars, we bring an is from face node and a branch node. As a condition, we pass is from face. For the true case, we pass the texture we have created. And for the false case, we pass any color. Personally, I'm going to use a black one. Finally, we connect this operation with the base color in the fragment shader. We save and return to our scene. If we assign a texture to our material, we can see that there is a difference between the external and internal color of our pillars. Our effect is ready. I invite you to modify the values to find different results. Thank you for joining us. Jet Telly wishes you success in your professional career.